I thank God for this move of God. I thank you for the power of God moving mightily through the earth. Because what's happening in the earth is not what secularists are saying, politicians are saying, business leaders are saying. What's happening in the earth is what saints are praying. Because what we are praying as believers is what God is doing. And we have this confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, we know he hears us. And if we know he hears us, we know that we have the petitions we've asked of him. And I thank you, Lord, that you have declared that certain things are going to happen in the earth, and they are happening now, and that we're not intimidated by any of the circumstances, nor the news people who are doing what they know to do, and that is say what is happening out in the earth. <clears throat> but, Lord, we know that what's happening in heaven is what's making the difference right now. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit is left here to do what Jesus declared he would be sent to do, and that he is not off his assignment, not one iota, and that the priorities of God and the commission of God to the disciples are still the same. Lord, I thank you that you sent the disciples out to preach the gospel to the whole world, and you said, these signs shall follow them that believe. And, Lord, I thank you that the signs that you declared that would happen in the earth are the things that are happening right now. And you said, Lord Jesus, that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Hey, I'm almost smiling as I'm as I'm reading this, because it seems like you know so many people. They're not they they're thinking that if you lay hands on the sick, particularly if this coronavirus is the thing that seems to be dominating the conversation, it, it it's like Jesus changed his mind about what he said to the disciples. You shall lay hands on the sick, and you're going to get the coronavirus, not. If you lay hands on the sick, they're going to recover. As though the anointing that's in your life and that's on your life, that, that the years you've spent consecrating yourself towards the word of God, it seems like a virus is going to take over the anointing that's in your life and that you're not a vessel for the power of God to be demonstrated now. So this great commission mandate is still in effect. That the assignment that God has had and called you to do is what is being done right now by many believers all over the world. And there are a number of missionaries right now who are in other countries that when I was on my way, matter of fact, I was down there, and some of you may know, I know that, that Susanna knows this. I was at Paul Zink's church the week before they, like, they shut down a lot of things, travel. I was, um, I was saying that I was on my way to Zambia, and and look, and I was saying, come on, you guys see to me, I'm on my way to Zambia, and I was going to go from Zambia to talk with tribal leaders to Smithhurst, you know, Overland Mission, you know that group, and then the, the tribal leaders and kings, and each tribal leaders oversees at least 280,000 people. I was going to go from there to Cape Town, South Africa, from Cape Town, to uh, Germany, uh, Frankfurt, Germany, which is where I've been going back and forth over the last couple of years because one of the leaders at, at uh, Franklin Graham's or Billy Graham's ministry said that Germany's in a free fall, and they were right. And the only thing that was saving it was, was the uh, Syrian Christians and the Nigerian church planning effort. So my, they didn't know when they gave me that word. They said, Bishop, if you go over there and speak and preach, we believe you to slow the free fall down and perhaps help restore that nation back again, like what um, Moody did in terms of the effect that he had in the UK. And then he was accepted more in the United States and had a tremendous effect here in the United States, and his work goes on even today. Well, I'm wondering, who is this guy giving me a word? Well, he didn't know I finished high school in Germany, met my wife in Germany. Germany, German in school, 
I, I, I've spoken for Christ for the Nations in Germany, why I'm in Germany. My wife and I said, we need to go check that out. And I had just turned the church over to, uh, to my associate, and we were getting ready to hit it. Well, there, we, there it was. So we went over, and we ended up at, in Klein Velka, where Ludwig van Zinzendorf sent off his first missionaries. And I'm sure numbers of you on the line know about that 100-year prayer meeting by the Moravians. And so we were right there, and, of course, we went to Hernhut as well. But listen, I, when they asked me to go to Zambia, I said, uh, I don't know. There's a lot going on here. I was talking about the coronavirus, and we don't know if the state's going to shut down, and I wouldn't be able to get back to the United States. It was like the, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart and, he, and, and asked me this question. Is the U.S. your home or is heaven your home? And I said, oh, my God. Hey, I changed up really quick. And said, "Look, you want, God, if you want me to go, I'm gone." So, you know, in other words, there was no sense of protecting my life, saving my life. It says, "If you save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life, you're going to save it." So I said, "I'm going." And when I was, you know, raising this fund for it, and then guess what? Johannesburg Airport shut down. They they weren't letting anybody in there, especially in the U.S. And then, therefore, if I couldn't get to Johannesburg, I couldn't get to Zambia. And then from Zambia, and then Germany shut down. So the Lord then let me know what my assignment is. And like so many other Christians, they are operating online. But in this particular case, you guys and Susanna already has an online. So I started doing Facebook things, but I'm not bound to it. I said numbers of times on my Facebook live feeds, that if someone wants me to come to where they are, uh, with corona or without corona, I'm saying in their churches, where some of them said, well, we can't hold meetings. No, in some place cities or nations or states, I should say, they are recommending you not. They want you to keep social. They didn't say you couldn't have the meeting. Well, down there, I'm sure you know about it, uh, some of you, that my friend Rodney Howard Brown was holding meetings and the sheriff came and shut the church meetings down. Well, I was just there two weeks earlier where the sheriff, where he had a a, a meeting, Rodney did, he had a, a meeting for the policemen to come to the church where he was acknowledging their work and praying over them. So the sheriff, that very sheriff was there. So Rodney Howard, the sheriff and I were walking because he fed them, fed the police force, fed the hundreds of people that were there also on the ground. And so who would think that two weeks later they would come there and say you have to shut down the meetings and say he has to turn himself in? Well, let me just say this. You know Rodney is an animal. And in that winter camp meeting, of course, uh, I spoke to the university group every day. And those people are hungry for God. They're not afraid to die. But people are saying, well, I'm afraid that you might get the coronavirus. You're going to get it, give it to others. Well, first of all, God is going to let you come to a meeting, a church meeting, where you're going to worship him, where he says, forsake not the assemblies of yourselves together, as some have. He says, when two of you are, are, agree as touching anything you shall ask, wait a minute, he's going to let you come to a church meeting, and then you're going to go there and get the coronavirus serving him? He said, well, you may give it to somebody else. Well, God says, I'm the, I'm the author and finisher. I'm the creator of life and the sustainer of life. I mean, whether you give it and give it to somebody else, God is just one controlling those lives, but in life or death, he controls saved or saints or sinners, both of those lives. I mean, you're not going to give it, and you're not going to give it to anybody else. Come on, where are the declarations where we stand on the efficacy of the word of God? We're not some people who are afraid to die. Jesus already destroyed death, hell, and the grave. You're not dying of no corona. So say, come on, say a strong, say it with me, those of you listening all over the world. Say it. I'm not going to die of the corona. Say it. I'm not going to die of the corona. Take a strong stand in the word of God. Don't be cowering down, saying, well, I'm hiding out. I'm in the church. I'm not afraid. Yes, you are. But look, somebody got to tell the political leaders and the, the, uh, the, the, the medical doctors and these people, where is the efficacy of the word? 
Dude, I, there was a special anointing. But by the way, let me go back to Rodney Howard. The governor then declared they were wrong in locking him up. And he apologized and expunged it from his record. See, they were quick to pass around that he was going to be locked up. But they weren't quick to, to pass around that the governor apologized for the sheriff locking him up like that. Why? Because he's a man of God standing on the efficacy of the word of God, and he's a standing flat-footed about it. At the same time, he did make provisions with a special uh, air device that he bought that cost him $100,000. He said that himself. Of course he did. He liked that. He's an animal. I like that. And I want to give uh, credit to um, also Franklin Graham. I mean, he sent the Samaritan people out there right in Central Park in New York City, right where it says that's where it's peaking at. He went right there. My friend Ken Barron told me, he said, Franklin wouldn't let him come. He's 71. He says, I'm not letting you come because I need you. But Franklin said, I'm going up there. I'm going to be right in the middle of it. Those of us as first responders are going to be right, right there. And we're going to be nursing people, praying for people, getting people saved right in the middle of it. What was he saying? He's not afraid to die. He looks the devil straight in the face, and we will go right in the middle of the corona. He's not hiding out. And I've seen some people are having coronavirus healing services. Exactly. Jesus laid his hands on people with the leprosy. With leprosy. They go tell the priest you just got healed. Do the woman with the issue of blood. And, and Mark 5, she should have been stoned to death. He said, who touched me? Why? Because the anointing in Jesus' life delivered that woman from her bondage. There is an anointing on your life. Every one of you listening to me right now, everyone who carries the spirit of holiness right now, you are holy, and if someone touches you, they're going to get your holiness. You're not going to get their germ. Read First Peter 1, 16. Read Leviticus 11, 44, and 45. When you decree something, I, you know, my daughter, Vegas, just sent me some decrees that she has when she prays. That's what it says in Job 22, 28. Thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be done unto thee. Philemon 6 says that, that the communication of your faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in you in Christ. The good in you is stronger than the evil that comes from outside of you. Come on. We walk by faith. Not by sight. Sure. But look, when you do the physical study, I have a, a person listening right on the line right now that works out of the library of Regent University. She's my editor. She looked at the statistical data, did the research for me, and saw that the flu is way more deadly than the corona in terms of the number of people who get it and how many people die each year from it. If the media turned their attention to, and I'm talking about older people as well, and if the media put their attention on this, the flu, the same way coronavirus, we would definitely, definitely would have declared a pandemic by now with that. But the Bible says what you bind on earth in Matthew 18, 18 and 19, is bound in heaven. What you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. No, we declare in the name of the Lord Jesus that the coronavirus is a defeated virus, not just because of medical science. And even with medical science, that intelligence that they use, that belongs to God. The devil or man don't get credit for healing. God gets the credit for it. And the Bible says in Matthew 21, 22, whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you receive. Now, let me just be balanced with you for a minute, because it seems like this stand I'm taking, it seems like, well, it's a strong stand. Because some pastors said, be saved. These people are not trying to get you to be saved. This is the devil trying to bring us into socialism. This is the devil trying to shut down the church from operating. Now, uh, the, the governor of New York says there's going to be a new normal. And the new normal is going to be like what? Socialism is what it's going to be. It's the control that these governors are trying to have over the church. Don't go to church meetings. Don't get too close to one another. You know, put on the mask. You know, all this, you're gonna, it's on your shoes, it's on your hands, it's on your gloves, it's on your mask. 
You can breathe it in the air. It's everywhere. That's the same way that God says the Holy Ghost is. I have a book I've written called The Holy Ghost is My Friend. I'm telling you, he's the great administrator of the things of God. He's waiting for you to declare what God has said in his word, and that's what's going to happen to you. I, I hear you from all these different places. You are a house of prayer, and you are making the difference. The new conversation is that the church of God is going to be a house of prayer like never before. And I have another book I'm looking at right now called Dare to Hope. This is the hope season. This is not a hate season. This is not a, a season of despair. And and Jeremiah, you know, look, he prophesied, but he has to also suffer through his prophecy. And in Lamentations 3, he starts out, I'm reading in the Living Translation. Oh, I just lost my place. In chapter 3, he says, I am the man that has seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. So it was judgment. I just finished before I came on the line reading the first 16 chapters of Ezekiel. It's judgment. And nobody talks about whether or not God is involved in any of this or not. Because he says God doesn't judge anybody. He's called God the judge of all people. What are you talking about? He's responsible for the whole earth. The devil and, and evil people can't do any more than what God allows. But he put us here to set standards and to bind. Look, the devil can't be annihilated, but he can be limited. What you declare he can't do, he can't do, based on the efficacy of the word of God. That we've been given a name, that above, that name is above every name. You've not only been given the name, you are the name. If God is your daddy, you have the DNA of the creator of the world inside of you. And you take a strong stand and tell the devil, coronavirus, and every other kind of sickness to shut up and to get out of your way. And that's where you stand. But even as a woman of God or a man of God, yeah, there are times when you're weak in this. Here's, here's Jeremiah weak. That's what Lamentations is. He was lamenting. And he said in verse 17, and thou hast removed my soul far from peace. Look what he said. It's the King James Version. I forgot prosperity. I'm telling you, a number of people who are in the church right now, that's exactly the case with them. They forgot prosperity. I'm not talking about no bank accounts. I'm talking about what it means to be solely sold out in the things of God. That your prosperity is your relationship, the proximity of your closeness with God, your dedication on the altar of total surrender. That's where you prosper, in the things of God, in a dedicated life. And then he says, again, he says, and my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. And then he begins to wake it up. Look what it says in verse 19. Lamentations 3, I'm reading. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul has been still in remembrance and is humbled in me. And verse 21, this I recall in my mind, therefore have I hope. Now, this is King James verse. I like, I like the um, New Living Version on this verse right here. He says, verse 20, I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Now, look at this. What are you doing, Jeremiah? Then you're going to never forget nonsense? No. And then you awaken. Verse 21. Yet I still look. Dare to hope. Woo! When I saw that phrase, dare to hope, I wrote a book on it. I call it dare to hope. Because you got to take the hope dare. The devil is not allowed to face you down unless you allow him to. He, Jeremiah, I mean, said, I will dare to hope when I remember this. And then he lists a number of things that he had forgotten. You got to remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Look, number three, great is his faithfulness. Number four, his mercies begin afresh every morning. Number five, I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. You got to read it, people, in Lamentations 3. What did he remember? He remembered the things that God had determined over his life. If you remember it, God has determined some things to happen in your life. You're not going to die until the will of God is fulfilled in your life. You're not only not going to die. You're going to rise up right now and be bold as a lion. You're going to stand strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And you're not only going to hide out and tell somebody, 
put your hands on the television screen right now. Look, I'm doing the internet stuff. I'm doing some of that. But I also will lay physical hands on the sick. I mean, numbers of you, you've heard probably even Benny Hand, you've heard the story of John G. Lake and John Alexander Dowie, where the bubonic plague put in his hands under a microscope, died under the anointing of John G. Lake. And in and, and his healing rooms, every kind of person that the Jesus came in there, this is a healing season. This is, a, this is the time for the church to arise. You come out of your house. You come out of your closet. You go and touch somebody's life. You, you stand strong. And let's say you stood strong, you got the corona, and you died. You mean you died doing the will of God? You mean you died laying hands on the sick? Man, you tell me death is negative? Death is negative. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I know this has been strong, but it's not a time to be a weak Christian now. This is time for the Father to come upon you with a new anointing. This is a new day. And this last day revival is going to be, listen to me now, a transformational revival. Meaning that what, listen to this, listen carefully to this. What you are becoming is greater than what you're going through. Let me say it again. As a believer, those of you on the line right now from all over the world, what you are becoming, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. From faith to faith, from strength to strength, from glory to glory, you are getting stronger. You are not getting weaker. There is more of a glory of God coming on you. He's going to return for a glorious church. Look, look. the coronavirus, like all these other viruses and flus and epidemics, they all pass. These things are temporary, but what you're becoming is permanent. You are one awesome believer in the Lord right now. You are a mighty soldier called out to live in this day, and it doesn't matter what gender you are, what race you are. It doesn't matter what, how poor you are, how rich you are. If you are born again, if God be for you, who can stand against you? Under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, my Father, I release a new anointing into the lives of every person under the sound of my voice right now. I say to you, be made whole. I say to you, arise and shine. This book called Your Journey with God, because there are too many Christians right now tripping. And Christianity is not a trip, it's a journey into Christ's likeness. This particular one, Regent University leadership, the one of the vice presidents asked if this could be a part of the curriculum of the School of Divinity, 400. And 64 pages. It is a consecration journal. One is dare to hope because it's the hope season. Two is your journey with God because you are being changed every day under a new consecration level of God being poured out. The evil of the darkness of the day is not stronger than the glory of God that's coming upon you right now. So in Jesus' name, I anoint you right now with a new anointing. You will make a difference in the world that God has you in. We got to take a strong stand for God's established leadership. I mean, because he says, I put one up, I take another down. And then when you trace the history of this man, this man goes back to the Hebrides Islands, and he has relatives that were part of the great revival in the past. So, no, he's about what God is doing in the earth right now. And he's the right man for the job. and we believers got to stand strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that it's not just about economics. You have control over the gold and the silver belongs to you, and that all the money in the earth is still here. No one was allowed to take any of it out. So, Lord, we also put a demand on your resources coming to the right bank account. And we thank you, Lord, for an economic upsurge to godly people. I want to cut my prayer off just one minute to say that a number of pastors since this thing has happened, their tithes and offerings have gone up, actually haven't gone down. So I also speak a blessing over a number of the different leaders and their churches where they may feel defeated because their people aren't coming to a location. But in Jesus' name, I'm asking you, Lord, in your wrath, remember mercy. And I thank you that over this president, your hand is upon him. You have him where he's at. And I thank you that he is blessed going out and blessed coming in. And every word spoken against him, may those words die unborn. 
And in Jesus' name, what we declare over his life, a new anointing, a new vigilance, where he would even be bolder, not only about calling National Days of Prayer, but in declaring his own salvation right out in the open, boldly declaring that this is a nation where God himself is the leader and in charge of. And, Lord, I ask for even more and more soldiers to be brought around him. Thank you for the ones that are around him right now. May they not be politically correct, but may they be biblically direct so that they would give him what he needs in this time to fuel him with a new boldness and even a new vigilance about Jesus Christ. And we thank you for all the people who are praying for this man, that even those who are Christians who have been speaking against him, may they understand what Psalm 75 say, that you set one up and take another down. And so in Jesus' name, let them understand that they speak against him. They're speaking against you, my Father. I'm asking you, Lord, change their conversation, change their messaging, change their prayer, so that they may stand on the veracity of your word. And what we are saying in your word is what this nation is becoming. And, Father, we're asking for worldwide transformation to occur, not just revival like we used to know it, not just a harvest. But, Lord, your people would be transformed into what eternity is about. And I'm asking for this eternity revelation to come to those listening right now, that they would see that it's what they're being transformed into is crucial. And I bless them in it, Lord. I bless this man of God. I thank you for sustaining our nation. And I thank you that our, our economic, our money system is not going to collapse because of the prayers of the saints, that we might get the gospel out to the whole world. I pray for those missionaries in other countries as well, Lord, that they wouldn't dare come home to the United States when you haven't changed their assignment, that when they locked them up into the U.S., they didn't lock them from coming. They wouldn't leave. Thank you for them, Lord. May we support them even more. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you. Be encouraged, for the joy of the Lord is your strength, is my prayer for you. I'm Wellington Boone.